Hi guys! I'm Madeline Harvey and welcome to day five of our seven day vocal makeover challenge. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to play with the shape of the vocal tract to give you a more beautiful tone and seamless transitions blending your voice. So if you liked today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up or click that subscribe button below. I would love to see you here more often. The video that you're about to see was taken as a clip as part of a live lesson that was shot earlier today. If you'd like to watch the entire live and access all the exercises within the live, then I invite you to click that join button below and become a member of this channel. As a member, you'll have exclusive access to all of our lives that we do every Monday and Thursday at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. If that's a little late for you, no worries. Feel free to access the members only area with over 70 hours worth of voice lessons. So again, just click that join button below. It's only $4.99 a month and your contribution helps to support our channel. That way we can continue to deliver awesome content just for you. You ready to get started? Here we go. When we talk about blending the voice, we are, to be precise, we're talking about creating the resonating space, utilizing the resonating spaces as a sort of shared resonance. resonance. And we want to introduce the, the manipulation of space. So I want to get into that really quickly. Um, when we talk about the vocal tract, the vocal tract is kind of like the tunnel that the voice is going to pass through on its way from being generated here to out here in sound. So the vocal tract itself usually is isolated right through here. It's like the throat and the nasal and mouth spaces. What we're going to do today is we're going to play with shaping. This is going to feel very similar to vowel work, but not. I want us to think that these are independent from vowel specifics. I want us to not try to make it into language just yet and really just look at it in terms of shapes. Now we've got two major, major shapes that we're going to play with today. It's more useful if we talk to talk about them in terms of their function. So the first one is called the nasal lilt. This is sometimes what people refer to as when they say sing in the mask. We want the sound to sort of appear, the vibrations to appear right here. We're going to get into that in just a second. We're going to isolate each of these so we can feel them and then we're going to blend them. So the first is that nasal lilt. This is where you get something that feels more akin to um, like a dopey, darker colored sound. So if we were to say the word alone, I feel so alone, or the word like horn, like we're going to play a horn. You can feel a little bit of the vibration sort of arriving in the front of the face. This is via the nasal lilt. Now it's more, more like this kind of shape that we're making. Horn. We've adjusted the vocal tract to be nice and long and high so that the vibrations can come right to the mask. The other is called the pharyngeal sound, or I call it the pharyngeal sound. It's also called like a bratty, kind of brassy sound. And that's where we have a much broader, wider nasal tract that tends to be brighter vowels. So if we were to say, ha, happy, I'm so happy, ha, we notice that the sound is directed to a very different space. Not so much in the mask anymore, kind of goes into the back, but in a very <clears throat> expansive kind of way. So those are our two sort of vocal function kind of exercises. These are the shapes that we're going to play with today. We'll start with one isolation, do another isolation exercise, and then blend them. Sound good? Okay. So even though I know this is going to be kind of confusing, I'd like for you right now not necessarily to think of it in terms of blending registers, just more of like playing with shapes. Okay, so let's start with our nasal lilt. Again, this is offered by the word like horn, as if we said the word horn or 
corn, nice and slowly. You can even think of it as like, uh, like a French kind of sound, like on, la rion, on, or even my favorite is the sound nur, like the candy nerds, but without the D. So I'm going to proceed with that. Nur, just like that. And that, that really allows me to feel, wow, so much vibration happening right, right there. So let's, let's go with nur. Really slow with me. N E R. Here we go. Just kind of lingering in on that N E R. Can you feel how this unique combination of vowels and consonants is making a shape in that vocal track? It's turning it into a very narrow but high and long space kind of like a horn, so that the sound goes right there. Uh -huh. And we feel that ER in the back of the throat, really lifting that soft palate, allowing that air to pass through. Good. Better shut the door. So let's try it like this. We're just gonna walk it down. Let's let it feel like speech. No, no, that my lips look like they're saying, ooh, don't they? But on the inside, I'm saying, no, 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 uh -huh. Hear that horn quality? Let's keep going. Yes, you can use that N consonant to give you something to hold on to. That way you don't flex in the throat. Just out of habit. Good, good. Now I feel that stretch. How about you guys? Feeling that kind of weird stretch. Now we wouldn't, we wouldn't necessarily sing. This kind of a scary face I'm making, to be honest. But we wouldn't kind of sing like this. But we're trying to over exaggerate what this feeling feels like, so that we can recall it. Nice long vocal track. Now there's a reason why we're not going ah or O, and part of it is the benefit that that E-R, that R is giving the, the mouth. If we say the word nrrr again, you can kind of feel the size of your tongue sort of make a taco shape. And that is helping to focus that air sort of, again, just like that horn, right, right into the mask, right into that nasal, nasal area. So if we were to go, ah, we would have way too much influence of the mouth. The pressure could get caught in the back of the throat and in the mouth, and then we kind of shout. So we don't want to do that right now. We want a nice blend, and we would just want to feel N-E-R, concentrating on that nasal lilt, using that E-R shape in the back. So let's try here. Gives you a way to modify that to your level of acoustic and ability. Uh 
Yeah. Reverse is really difficult. Let's try that again. Yes. Now, if you hear some shaking in my voice, it is because my acoustics are more, what are they, suited for a brassier tone. These types of sound are kind of hard for the way that my skull is made on the inside. So if you're feeling like, all right, me too, that's happening a little bit in me too, that's all right. We're just keeping that, uh, This is where the um, the development is. Staying in those shapes and not trying to make it wider, especially if it's feeling uneven. Let's try that one again. a beautiful open vowel later on but this is kind of like our our training wheels on our bicycle Good, two mas. Good, very good. No, 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 no. That is our first sound for the nasal lilt. Now let's take it back down. We're gonna go, we're going to go and then we're gonna carry that ah down. Just gonna see if a little bit of isolation work did the trick, keeping that, keeping that position of the, the na not the nasal track, the vocal track nice and long. And we're gonna go more of a long ah instead of ah, we're gonna get into our broader nasal track, our vocal track is what I'm trying to say um, later. So, much easier but can you feel how you got to really hang on to that r yeah like <laughs> just like that don't go if you relax out of that and turn it into an ah a relaxed ah you're gonna lose control of that air because the vocal tract suddenly changes. So what we're looking to do today is to keep that vocal tract right now, nice and long and high, and then take a nice little graduation, just a little bit of graduation, a little bit. Let's give it one more try, here we go, from the E. Takes a lot of breath, doesn't it, y'all? Let's try it one more time. 
Now, if you've got it, I'm probably gonna do this. If you gotta hold on to the R just a little bit longer, maybe even not on that first note, but ah, graduate as you go down, I'm okay with that. I'm gonna give that a try. Much easier, much easier. Yeah, Whew. this takes an enormous amount of air, doesn't it? And we do notice that as we go from er to even a very small graduated ah, since we are graduated more space, more breath is being asked of us. So it is going to feel like it's getting a little wobbly. Yeah, over the course of this lesson, you might hear something called uh, polyphonic going on. There's a little bit of it present there. And you might feel it also in your own head space, especially with this N-E-R sound. I don't know if I can do it on demand, but it's like you're doing this uh, shape. You might hear a higher sound kind of creep in there and that's just a consequence of getting this holistic skull going on it's like a pretty cool consequence um, but don't freak out if you start to hear this really high high something going on as you're as you're playing with this er can you feel Even if you didn't go the vocal track, that's too different. That's too different. We may have to go just for the, the for the sake of balance. It's very, very, very difficult once you start making these vocal tract, especially these long vocal tract sounds, these darker vowel colors, a lot of air comes through and it's very challenging just to balance the tone. But we want to be able to over exaggerate these, the shape because some beautiful tone can come through. So let's just do a couple more.
That was the long, that was the nasal lilt. In my opinion, that is the hardest one to control. But if you can start small, use the N-E-R to help you navigate that high and very narrow vocal tract. Just navigate what that feels like, get that blend, get that balance. Then over time, you can open it up into an ah. And what we're looking for after is that you can get sort of a spontaneous recall depending on the style that you're singing, okay? That, that overtone can kind of give you that influence of the style. Cool, so now that we've introduced the nasal lilt, let's go into the, the back, the pharyngeal, and then we'll blend the two.